nurses, volunteerism is an important aspect of building your nursing career, as well as participating in civic life and giving back to society as a healthcare professional. In the aftermath of Hurricane Harvey, we're diving into why volunteering is so very important right here on episode 124 of The Nurse Keith Show. What's up, everyone, and welcome to The Nurse Keith Show. Thanks for being part of the Nurse Keith Nation, whether this is your first time listening or you've been tuning in for dozens and dozens of episodes over the last few years. This podcast is all about you and your nursing career, and I'm here to share education, inspiration, and ideas that can get you moving in a positive and inspired direction. I'm a member of the Pulse Media Network of podcasters over at PulseMediaNetwork.com, along with RNFM Radio, Elizabeth Scala's Your Next Shift podcast, The Gluten-Free RN, and Sara Santa Croce's Introvert Biz Growth podcast. You know, whether you're a business owner or not, you'll really get a lot out of Sara Santa Croce's Introvert Biz Growth podcast, especially if you happen to be an introvert or have introvert tendencies. She has very smart and intelligent interviews with some of the most savvy introverted entrepreneurs around the world, and they shed light on how introversion is actually a superpower and how you can use it to move your career forward. I also recommend you check out the Glute free RN with Nadine Grzkowiak. She is a global expert on all things gluten intolerance and celiac disease. She's currently flying to India as I record this to participate in an international symposium on gluten intolerance and celiac disease. And we're so proud of her. So head over to PulseMediaNetwork.com to check out Nadine and Sarah. Anyway, the show notes for this episode can be found at nursekeith.com forward slash episode 124. That is nursekeith.com forward slash episode 124. Let's dig into today's very important and timely topic, shall we? So folks, I'm recording this during Labor Day weekend of 2017, and I've been writing a blog post that's going to actually publish on Labor Day Monday here in the United States, and it's all about the crucial nature of nurse volunteerism. And this is an important part of the labor story because so many working people volunteer all over the world every day of the year, year end and year out, because volunteerism is actually, I think, essential human nature. And many of us like to contribute to society. We like to give back and we like to help others. And nurses are known as givers and nurses are big volunteers here in the United States and around the world. Like all of you, I've been watching and listening to and monitoring the news out of Houston, Texas, Eastern Texas, and even Western Louisiana as they deal with with Hurricane Harvey and its aftermath. And it's really brought to mind how nurses come to the fore during any natural disaster, but how nurses also volunteer kind of as good Samaritans and airsats volunteers when they're called for, even when it's not an official event or an official call for action or call for volunteers. Do you know what I mean? Nurses just kind of roll up their sleeves and jump in there no matter what's happening, whether it's an official event that they need to actually show up for or whether it's helping an old lady cross the street or helping someone who's fallen down off their bicycle. This notion of nurse volunteerism serves many purposes, and we need to talk about it because it's important to your career and it's also important to your personal and professional growth. So we've been hearing lots of stories from Hurricane Harvey in the Houston area in terms of people coming out in their private boats and doing search and rescue just because they can. We've heard about nurses and healthcare workers helping nursing home residents and hospital patients who are knee deep or thigh deep in water during the flooding. There's been amazing acts of heroism that have been documented 
by either film or the written word or video or photographs. And a lot has also gone undocumented, but we know that it's happening because we've heard all about it. People hear the call of duty, they get out there and they go above and beyond to save lives and protect property. You know, if I didn't have a broken leg at the moment, as at this recording, I may have hopped in my car and tried to go to Houston myself, but I've needed to donate money instead because that's what I've been able to do. So speaking of donating money, let's take a pause for the cause here and just say that there is many places to donate money. And while people may have some Maybe valid criticisms of the American Red Cross in the way they've handled disasters and especially handled their money in the past. We also need to recognize that the American Red Cross is really the foremost organization to get ready and be on site on day one when a disaster strikes. And the American Red Cross is a very, very important organization for us to donate to and support or volunteer for. Having said that, if you'd like to donate to more grassroots groups in the Houston area, the Houston Food Bank is a really great one. They need money to help feed people who don't have homes and don't have their wherewithal to feed themselves or even access to money or stores. And the Houston Humane Society or ASPCA, if you want to support the rescue or the care of animals who were affected by the storm, there are plenty of places to give your money. And if you're on social media, definitely check out the hashtag Harvey Nurses to find out what nurses are posting and how you can also help. The Texas Nurses Association is also a great organization to contribute to because they're helping nurses directly impacted by the disaster. So, you know, down in Texas, nurses and others are going to be giving and contributing in the Harvey aftermath for months and years to come. There's a lot that needs to happen to recover from a storm like this. You all probably already know that from stories of Katrina and Superstorm Sandy earthquakes, so many other disasters that have occurred. And whoever out there is able to continue to contribute or volunteer or help out in any way, it's greatly appreciated by so many thousands and millions of people. Speaking of the Red Cross, my friends, nurses have been a part of disaster relief since time immemorial. But did you know that nurse Clara Barton formed the American Red Cross in 1881? I think I learned that back in nursing school, but I actually just needed to look on Wikipedia and remind myself of what happened with Clara Barton. What happened actually was that President Rutherford B. Hayes was really, you could say, dragging his feet about the United States joining the International Red Cross. So what did Clara Barton do? She took the bull by the horns, took it into her own hands, and she founded the American Red Cross on her own and served as its first president for quite a few years. And while the International Red Cross was, I think at that time, primarily devoted to the war effort and war relief, she actually wanted to also include disaster response in the mission of the American Red Cross. So Clara Barton was way ahead of her time in many ways, and her volunteer efforts in terms of the American Red Cross have had reverberations for, gosh, centuries now. And there's plenty of other organizations where nurses take part. I think one of the main ones that comes to mind for many of us is Doctors Without Borders. And Doctors Without Borders works in war-torn and other areas all over the world. And there's actually a local organization that's somewhat similar based right here in Santa Fe, New Mexico. My friend Andrew Lustig is a medical professional who heads up Global Outreach Doctors. He's even been a guest on RNFM Radio, and you can go to the show notes at nursekeith.com forward slash episode 124 to hear Andrew talk about his work in some well, you could say some of the most dangerous places on earth. So global outreach doctors, doctors without borders, there are so many places you can give of yourself, nurses, and I know many of you already do. 
Nurses are prone to snap into action. We are taught critical thinking skills. We are taught how to triage, how to assess, how to take prudent action. And many of you out there are already contributing in so many ways to Harvey and other situations and events and organizations around the country and around the world. And I want to thank you personally for doing that. Earlier, I mentioned the notion of good Samaritanism when it comes to nurses. And yeah, nurses can be documented as having worked for Doctors Without Borders for several years and throw that on a resume. But what you can't put on a resume are things like helping, like I said, someone cross the street or stopping to help a bicyclist who just had an accident and you perform first aid on them. Or maybe you were in a restaurant and you perform the Heimlich maneuver on a person who's choking. Those are acts of, we could say, volunteerism or good Samaritanism that I know many nurses and healthcare professionals participate in constantly. We are the people who come running We are the people who pull over to the side of the road and run to the site of a car accident to see if we can help. We do so much unofficial volunteering that I think we sometimes lose sight of the ways that we contribute to society without it being something we can actually document. Those documentable things are wonderful, don't get me wrong. Volunteering for the Medical Reserve Corps is awesome, or participating in, let's say, emergency preparedness drills, or being on the board of a nonprofit. That is awesome. That's a great thing to do. And I also want to call your attention to the ways in which you give back that aren't really official. They're just the things that you do because you're a nurse and a caring human being. Now, let's talk about volunteerism and career building, because I think that's an important piece here. And, you know, I'm a career coach. And when I talk to young and even older nurses, I recommend having some volunteerism on the resume. This is not a cynical recommendation. I don't mean just go out there and volunteer just because it's going to look good. Of course, you want to volunteer from your heart. You want to volunteer for something that has value and meaning for you because that will bring value and meaning to your life. So yes, volunteering is great for building your resume. It also is a way to show potential employers, for instance, that you enjoy and put value and merit in contributing to society, to giving back, to being a nurse who contributes beyond the walls of the workplace. This means a lot to certain employers. To others, it doesn't really mean anything, really. But to many, that shows that you're a nurse who's engaged, engaged in your life, engaged in your career, and more importantly, engaged in the world. You all know I'm really big about networking, and volunteering, I've got to say, is an awesome way to meet like-minded healthcare professionals and non-professionals. And it can put you in touch with people and organizations and situations beyond the usual spheres that you move through. So when you take part in meaningful volunteer efforts, what is happening is you're getting exposed to circumstances that just wouldn't come down the pike for you otherwise. And you might form bonds with other people, other nurses and doctors and professionals and non-professionals that might last a lifetime. You know, if you volunteer at a camp for autistic children or You drive down to Houston and help in the aftermath of Hurricane Harvey. Imagine the friendships and the camaraderie that comes of that sort of experience. That we can't really put on your resume, but it builds character and it gives you a richness of life and professional experience that you can bring to interviews and bring to the workplace and show a potential employer what an awesome, amazing, incredible, giving person you are. That is part of building the breadth and depth of your career and also of your person, of yourself as a member of society, and of yourself as a member of the nursing profession. 
There's tons of value in volunteerism, my friends, way beyond resume enhancement, though enhancing your resume and your career is perfectly fine. It's a perfectly great reason to seek out a volunteer situation. However, you'll find that it contributes to your life and adds value to your life far beyond anything you could possibly measure. I also want to say, folks, that we can also become a little bored or stagnant in our nursing careers, and we can feel kind of like disenchanted, like it doesn't really mean much to anymore. We're kind of burned out, and the compassion fatigue has set in, and we're just feeling that nursing ennui. So folks, volunteerism is a way just to build such value and depth and breadth and richness into your life. And I encourage you to find something that really moves the needle for you both personally and professionally, whether it's volunteering at the local hospice, at an autistic children's summer camp for the Red Cross or flying around the world with Doctors Without Borders. You know, it doesn't really matter. I want to encourage you to do something that speaks to your heart and soul and at the same time can build more for your career, more visibility, more credibility, just more sense of who you are as a human being and who you are as a nursing professional. There's so many opportunities out there, friends, and I encourage you to get in touch with other healthcare professionals who've done volunteerism and ask them what it's like. Ask to interview someone who's been with Doctors Without Borders. Find out what their experience was like. Visit that summer camp. Talk to the nurse who's been on staff and see if it's something that really floats your boat that would really work for you. Or if you want to just walk into the local senior center and say, hey, I'm a nurse, what can I do? Go for it. Do it. It's contributing to society and contributing to your own growth as a person. So folks, thanks for listening to episode 124 of the Nurse Keith Show. I really needed to respond to Hurricane Harvey. I really needed to speak with you about the value of volunteerism. And I wanted to just really express from my heart that I personally appreciate all the people who contributed to the search and rescue and recovery missions that are happening down there in Texas as we speak. You know, the Cajun Navy, which is an ad hoc group of people with boats from Louisiana, they were formed basically after Hurricane Katrina. And whenever there's flooding, they just get their boats out there and go out and rescue people. So Go down there, connect with the Cajun Navy, and see what you can do the next time there's a flood. It doesn't really matter what you do, my friends. What matters is that it means something to you. And I want you to feel uplifted and empowered from this episode to go out there and do something, no matter how small or large. And I want you to take inspired action in the interest of your professional satisfaction and your career development in any way that suits you. And did you know that you could become a patron of the Nurse Keith Show? That's right. Christine Robertson, the very kind Christine Robertson, just became a patron of the Nurse Keith Show over at Patreon.com. And I'm so grateful to her for reaching out and telling me what value she gets from the show. You can give $20 a month for a period of time and you'll get some free coaching out of it. Or give $10 a month and you'll get a signed copy of one of my books, a postcard, and a mention on the show. So give what you can. Support The Nurse Keith Show. This is free for everyone. But if you'd like to give back for a little while and contribute to what I'm doing here, head over to patreon.com forward slash Nurse Keith. That's P-A-T-R-E-O-N dot com forward slash Nurse Keith. And as always, The Nurse Keith Show is edited and produced by the amazing Tim Hollowell of thepodcastingguy.com. He also helps us out on many shows over at the Pulse Media Network. Social media and promotion are handled by the equally wonderful and amazing Mark Cappy Spiesen. Find us over on Apple Podcasts, formerly known as iTunes, and leave a rating and review. It helps other people find the show. Remember, the show notes are at nursekeith.com forward slash episode 124. Folks, stay positive, care for yourself and others, take inspired action in the interest of your career, and tune in again as we explore how to make your nursing career more satisfying and inspired 
than you ever imagined. Be well, dig deep, seek joy, and keep in touch. Adios till next time from beautiful Santa Fe, New Mexico. Mm-hmm.